Mike, we're one of the fortunate few that uh, just bought ourselves a new airplane, and, and lo and behold, we've got screens. None of those old steam gauges. And the nice part is, is that there's this amazing piece of technology that, you know, everybody's heard the buzzword and they see the little initials and they may not necessarily understand all things AHARS. You build these things. Tell us, what the hell is an AHARS? AHARS is really uh, the next generation of, uh, of gyros and systems, really replacing the mechanical systems completely. Uh, there are no moving parts. It's literally a small silicon sensor uh, on a board or in a, in a larger box that doesn't have any, any moving parts and really has a longer MTBF, low power, low weight, and increased performance. One of the things that came up uh, initially is we're talking about mean time between failure, MTBF. Uh, you know, our average gyro, you're lucky to get a couple hundred hours before you send it off to the shop, and nine times out of ten when it goes, you know, all of a sudden it's a flag and <laughs> off it goes. Uh, an electronic replacement, we're talking about MTBFs in the thousands and tens of thousands of hours in some cases, depending on the specification. These things basically just don't break. That's correct. Uh, we have one, uh, one product in particular that's certified that goes up to 80,000 hours of MTBF. Uh, that should certainly outlast any aircraft in the field. Uh, I can tell you over, over the years we've been doing this, uh, since the year uh, 2000 when we had our first certified product, I can count the number of failures on our primary product on two hands. Uh, that's a very small number of failures over a very large field of uh, thousands of units. I would assume the main reason for the reliability is the, the watchword, no, or not watch phrase, I should say, no moving parts. That's correct. Uh, no moving parts really, uh, really means there are no spinning gyros, there's no spinning mass, no bearings to wear out. It's really just a piece of silicone that's uh, essentially vibrating uh, to give us the acceleration and the uh, rate of uh, turn. Now, how is this technology derived? I mean, it, obviously a gyro can be fooled to a certain extent, but I, uh, I would assume under these circumstances that this is a system and its information literally cannot be fooled. You can still fool a, a system. It's very difficult to do. Predominantly, this, this came out of the automotive market. There's some military applications as well that have really driven the technology. But really, at this point, every year we're seeing the technology get better and better. And it's, it's getting to a point where the technology has really surpassed the uh, traditional fiber optic gyros. And it's really starting to approach the level of a military ring laser gyro. The way they work, it's, it's very similar to a, a tuning fork principle. Uh, if you think of a tuning fork, once you vibrate it, it tends to go in one direction. It wants to stay in that direction. Uh, we can measure that deflection uh, when you start rotating around a, a certain axis, and that's how we get the, uh, the rotation and the acceleration. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect including the Cirrus Airframe Parachute System. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. What should an owner of an AHARS-equipped aircraft know? Is there something that we have to worry about? Too hot, too cold, too wet, too dry? I think one of the, the main things that's overlooked right now is the, uh, the dependence upon aiding. Uh, MEM sensors in general, to improve performance, a lot of folks are really looking at aiding, specifically air data aiding and GPS. And uh, it's important to realize what your system requires to operate. Does it require air data aiding? And if you lose that aiding, what happens? Uh, I think especially in IFR conditions, if you lose an, an air data computer, or if you lose a, a pitot tube or input, it's important to know how, that, how your system's going to react. And how can a person who's operating one of the uh, new general aviation uh, aircraft that have become so popular now with the glass panels and of course are now being guided, if you will, by AHARS. How, uh, how can they educate themselves about this? There's some, uh, some general information in the pilot's guides, obviously. Uh, on our website, we have a lot of white papers that really go into more detail. Uh, I think on the internet now, you can find quite a bit about MEMS technology. It's, it's really become uh, much more prevalent. Well, Crossbow obviously is a leader in the field. We, we see uh, Crossbow uh, AHARs in a, in a number of applications. Where are some of your uh, applications? What airframes might we see your equipment on now? Right now, we're in over 600 airframes, uh, thousands of units in the field. Predominantly, we're an OEM supplier. We supply to a lot of big companies. Some of our customers that are, have been publicly released are Honeywell, Sagem, Advanced Flight Systems. Uh, we have a couple others as well. We recently signed up to one of our newer products that I can't quite disclose yet, but we'll, we'll see a press release here in the coming months. Mike, where does this technology go from here? I mean, one thing we've noticed is that these used to be good-sized boxes. And they were, you know, this kind of shielding and all kinds of containers. And they were fairly good-sized at one point. They're getting pretty small. That's right. Um, you know, just no more than five years ago, we had a large box that was, uh, you know, about 120 cubic inches. 
Uh, we have a card level product now that's down to roughly 11 cubic inches, and it's, it's gotten so small now that I think the AHARS itself as a separate box will probably disappear. I think you're going to see the uh, inertial system and the AHARS itself built into the glass panels and built into these, uh, these other pieces of equipment on the aircraft. We've had the question a couple of times, you know, in the event of a lightning strike, uh, immersion in water, inclement environments, high humidity, is there anything that can affect the, uh, the modern AHARS? Really not at this point. Um, we've actually, all of our certified boxes that are complete systems have passed lightning strike, helicopter vibration. Uh, we even had a couple come back from uh, some unfortunate accidents in, uh, in the northern regions of Alaska that had some water damage and had been submerged, and uh, they were still functional when we got them back. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. Okay, so we're down to card size implementations. The next implementations are probably built into the devices themselves. What about the technology? I, it, it would seem to me that there's just so many ways to take this kind of technology and employ it in more aggressive ways in the average airframe. Where might we see this from here on out? I think you're going to see a lot more of this in autopilots. You're going to see a lot more in glass panel displays, uh, backup indicators. I think you're going to see a much, much larger growing market uh, in other, other you know, places as well, such as the automotive industry. Avionics, for the most part, seems to be the driving force at this point. How about power consumption? I, w I would think that these things are, uh, are, are duty bound to be a very low consumption, but more important, uh, pretty much tailor made for battery backup and so forth, giving you not only redundancy, but triple and, 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 and quad uh, levels of redundancy, if, if you will, over some of the systems that are, have been currently available. Absolutely. Uh, most of our systems are less than five watts. We have one right now that's less than two and a quarter watts. Very, very low power. Uh, you'll see, due to the size now, I think you'll see most of these cards implemented in dual or maybe even triple redundancy into the actual glass panels themselves. Outside of all that, is there something that you're finding from the pilot community that they really don't understand, that they really need to know about this technology? I think it's just a matter of time. I think everybody's getting a little more up to speed with it. Um, you know, in the beginning, there was a little bit of uh, apprehension, I think, because uh, it's a new technology. And, you know, we want to make sure we're all safe and, and conservative. But I think it's really come along. I think folks are really starting to understand how it works and, and what the advantages are. And final question. How long is it going to be from, say, here on out to the time when you hear somebody talk gyro and some, uh, some kid wet behind the ears flying around in his G1000 equipped 162 goes, what the hell's that? I, I don't think it's going to be too much longer. I think uh, at this point, pretty much every OEM is going to glass or has already gone to glass. Uh, I suspect in the next 20 years, it's going to be very hard to find a uh, mechanical gyro. Mike, thanks so much for your time. You're very welcome. Thank you.